From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone, Dave Vellante here, and welcome to the special Cube Conversation with a colleague and friend of mine, Randy Seidel, is an accomplished CEO, he's an executive sales pro, he's, and he's a founder of the sales community, uh, this newly formed social network. Randy, good to see you again, welcome. Hey, great, great to see you. Uh, it's been a lot, a lot of great years, great relationship with you and uh, uh, congratulations with uh, all your success with SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. The, uh, I was, I was uh, re remembering back, I think it's been probably since 1985, so 35 years ago when we were both uh, Cub Scouts, uh, I was at EMC and you're at IDC. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I love, I love you know, where you are, your, your man cave there. We, you, you held a great little event, networking event that you do periodically with some of our uh, joint colleagues. Uh, and yeah, wow, it's, we were both in our 20s. I, I was a young pup and, and uh, Dick Egan and Jack and Mike, uh, and they would have me talk to you guys, you know, sort of brief you on the market, what, what little I knew now looking back. But uh, wow, Randy, I mean. We knew. Right, yeah, right? I mean, and then just the whole thing just took off. And, but we had a good instinct, right? That storage was going to matter, that, you know, everything back then was, was mainframe and IBM was the, the king of the world. And then, you know, you guys just crushed it. Wow, what a run, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about sales community. What, what are you trying to accomplish this, with this new social network? Well, it was uh, uh, kind of re really my COVID moment. Uh, I was talking to uh, Peter Bell, who I know you know well as well. And uh, it was right in the beginning of COVID. We're kind of comparing notes and you know, long story short, he said, hey, Randy, you do all this work with these uh, you know, technology companies, the channel partners, uh, end user customers, CIOs, CTOs, CISOs, but you're really not uh, doing much for those that you know the best, which are really the you know, technology sales professionals, CROs, SDRs, kind of up and down the food chain. And that really got me thinking. Then he introduced me to one of his companies that sells to CROs. And I was going through with them and, you know, they were kind of calling me on the carpet saying, okay, do I really know these people? I'm like, oh my gosh, I basically just said, you know, I'm a dope. I haven't really kind of done anything here. So, you know, one thing led to another and uh, ended up developing a sales community. A, a big thing and big help for me was talking to uh, probably 150 or so uh, during the course of the summer, uh, CROs, VPs of sales, reps, SDRs, uh, to really kind of help get some feedback from them in terms of, uh, I call it, I guess now you call it product market fit, but kind of what do they think that's missing? What's needed? What do their teams need? What do they want? So um, it's kind of all, all, all a perfect storm, which, you know, to be honest, without COVID, I probably wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have created sales community. Well, uh, you know, I joined and it was a great onboarding experience and, and love participating with, with colleagues. I mean, sales is, sales is hard, right? I mean, you got your ups and your downs and you just got to keep uh, uh, pressing on, but who, who's participating in sales community? Uh, we're targeting uh, SDRs on up to CROs. And the kind of the tagline is, you know, learn more so you can sell more. Uh, we have a lot of great different kind of content areas and we're going to, you know, kind of bob and weave based on the, the feedback that we get. Uh, but we've got some great uh, uh, virtual events and uh, interviews. Uh, we have an executive coach, uh, Tony Jerry, who's doing nine sessions on designing your life. Uh, we did a recording, uh, a live session last week on uh, personal goal setting. We did one yesterday that was a live session that'll be posted shortly on uh, strategic health. Next one's on branding. So that's not necessarily specific to tech sales, but kind of adding value. Uh, we also have uh, Dave Knorr, another executive coach doing a weekly interview series that we're calling Tech Sales Insights with some of the leading uh, CRO, CEOs, uh, Jim Sullivan, who I know you know well, is going to be the first one. It's going to be next next Wednesday. He runs uh, NWN and has uh, done a lot of great things and uh, a, lot, a lot of other great leaders from there. Uh, also still on the, uh, uh, the interview virtual event side, uh, Mike Katoya from uh, Tech Target is going to do a, a demo insight series. Uh, his Tech Target uh, international editors are also going to do regional ones. So CIO uh, interviews for from uh, EMEA, Asia PAC, Latin America, Australia. Uh, also on the CISO side, we have somebody uh, focused on doing uh, CISO uh, interviews, Paul Salamanca, have uh, channel interviews. I think this channel, you know, by and large gets, uh, gets missed a lot. Uh, CEOs and then uh, Steve DePlessis, who I know you know well as well, 
is going to do on focus on uh, CIOs, so CIO insights, but basically creating virtual events and interview series that are really targeted at people that we uh, that we sell to. So that covers the kind of virtual event and interview side. And um, I'll maybe more quickly go through some of the other key segments. So another one is a, a content library. Um, there's a, a, a guy, uh, Dots, who's a, a SDR at a, a ServiceNow, went through, sent me a note the other day that said, hey, I, I found out you have some great feedback on uh, prospecting, cold calling. I shared it with my team, helped me a lot. So a lot of good things in terms of content library. Uh, also opportunity to network. So you could be, say, selling to Fidelity. You could uh, send a note to the community and members and say, anybody else trying to sell to Fidelity? You know, let's network, let's, let's compare notes. Uh, also great opportunities for channel partners. So channel partner could raise their hand and say, hey, I know Fidelity, you know, let, let, let me help with you. A lot of sharing of best practices. And also just in terms of communication, Slack channels, and then opportunities to create roundtables. So you might have um, CROs from startups that want to have maybe six to ten of them get together, so they can kind of commiserate, ask questions. You could have CROs at you know companies that are maybe transforming, going from you know on-prem to kind of SaaS models. So uh, a lot of different great things. Ultimately, really to to serve the you know uh, folks in the tech sales community. Yeah, it sounds like I mean, first of all, tons of content. The other thing I like about it is. We all read books on sales, you know, some of them are sort of gimmicky, some of them are inspirational, some of them have, you know, really great suggestions, some of them can be life-changing. But what's what's always been missing, in my opinion, is this this notion of a network, a social network, if you will, where people can help each other. You just gave a ton of good examples. So you're really trying to differentiate from a lot of the things that have worked over the years, but have really sort of one-way communication, some guru, sales guru, either training or you're reading his or her book. Yes, and uh, we're also fortunate on the content side, we have some of the best kind of sales consulting, sales methodology companies that love what we're doing. So they're likewise providing a lot of content. And you know, as you said, it's crazy. You think of any other industry, uh, you know, restaurant, hotel, lawyers, landscape, you know, they have these, you know, big, you know, kind of user groups, even, you know, technology companies have user groups but within the, the large field of technology sales, enterprise, B2B sales, there's really nothing that uh, like this that exists. So, you know, so far the feedback's been great. Well, so just to what you're describing, I mean, I've known you for a long, long time. You're you know, one of the principles of, of great salespeople is, you know, you help others, right? You make as many friends as you can and you're, you're the, the master of that. But essentially you're bringing a lot of the things that have worked, a lot of the principles that have worked in your career uh, to this community. Uh, maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, especially I think some of the you know, younger sales folks, um, you know, it's not kind of off the cuff as we know, but it's really kind of, you know, training, being disciplined, being prepared, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it in this COVID moment? Um, you know, I'm, I'm seeing uh, lots of friends where, you know, the companies that have great relationships, they can do really well and kind of lean in a lot. You know, if you're kind of, you know, cold calling in this environment, it's tough. So kind of, you know, how can you be best prepared? How can you do the best homework? How can you have the kind of right agenda for when you're going to do the sales calls? And then uh, it's not really as much follow up, but it, uh, really follow through in terms of what you do afterwards. So kind of what is the training? What can you do? How can you do it? And uh, you know, it's crazy. A lot, a lot of companies spend lots of money on, on, on training, but if you think about it, you know, really tight in specifically to tech sales, uh, ho hopefully this will be great. Plus being able to just kind of throw questions here and there uh, work, works out uh, well as well. Well, that's what I'm looking forward to is, hey, I got some challenges, you know, how, how do others you know, deal with this? You know, one of the things that is, I think, you know, paramount to, to being a great salesperson is the, the attitude. You hear it all the time. How do you stay pumped up? Um, you, you know, like I said before, we've all been through ups and downs and, and you know, what do you tell people there? Uh, in terms of staying pumped up, uh, interestingly enough, the session we did yesterday on strategic health, you know, probably plays a key role. So yeah, there's the work aspects and how you're going to focus and wake up and get fired up. But, you know, ultimately, I think you really got to take several steps back and saying, you know, are you taking care of your, yourself? You know, are, are you sleeping? Are you eating and drinking correctly? Are you, are you drinking enough water? Are, are you exercising? So, you know, in this moment, I think that's probably something that gets missed a lot in terms of, you know, getting fired up. And then ultimately just being excited about kind of what you're doing, how you're doing it, taking care of the customers and, you know, serving those around you. And you'd mentioned in terms of, you know, giving it back, but, you know, a lot of us that have been around are, you know, love the idea of kind of, you know, paying it forward, you know, help, helping out others and, you know, seeing a lot of the uh, great younger folks really rise up and become stars. I think that's one of the most exciting things is, you know, somebody has been around for a while, like you, 
I, we all get cold calls. So, hey, how you doing today? You know, it's, <laughs> then you have that dead air, right? And you actually want to reach out and, and help these individuals. Uh, a lot of times they'll call you, they have no idea what you do. Well, I've, I've read your website and I think we'd be a great fit for, you know, something that would not be a great fit. So, so you know, it's, there's, a, there's a level of preparation. We always talk about in sales, you, you know, you got to be prepared, but there's also sometimes, I, I, I was talking to a sales pro the other day, he said, you know, sometimes you can over-prepare. He said, he said, I've been on you know, sales calls, I prepare for hours and hours and hours, and then I get there and it was just a lot of wasted hours. I probably could have done it in 15 minutes. I mean, so there's a, there's a really a, a balance there and it comes with experience, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how anybody could prepare hours and hours. So that's a whole <laughs> different subject to think. Well, he said, my technique now is just 15 minutes before the call, I'll jump on and just, you know, cram as much as I can. And it actually, it worked for him. So, you know. Well, different different approaches, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Now, the other thing I'd like to mention is the uh, advisory board. I'm uh, fortunate to have uh, worked with and be friends with uh, several of the uh, best in industry like you. Uh, so if anybody goes to the website, you can click on advisory board and there's uh, you know 200 plus, I'm not counting them exactly, but you know some of the best in uh, technology. Uh, we've got them sort on the sales side and the channel side, the consulting side, the coaching side, you know, analyst side, but you know, really just such a, you know, tremendous uh, really beachhead of talent that can really help us continue to go and grow and pivot and, you know, making sure that we are serving uh, our sales community and making sure everybody's learning more so they can sell more. And then I guess I should add, add on to that also, you know, earning more and making more money. So I got to ask you where you land on this. I mean, you're a sports fan, I am too. And for, for a while there, you know, once, once Moneyball came out, you saw Billy Bean and it was this sort of formulaic approach. The guy, you know, we, we would joke the team with the best nerds would win. Uh, but, but it seems like there's, there's an equilibrium, right? It used to be all gut feel and experience, and then it became, you know, the data nerds. And it seems like in our industry, it's following a similar pattern. You know, the, the marketing, the mar marketing ops, MarTech, uh, be becoming very, very data driven. But, if, but it feels to me, Randy, especially in these COVID times, that there really is this, this equilibrium, this balance between experience, uh, and, and tribal knowledge, gut feel, network, which is something you're, you're building, and the data. How, how do you see that, that role, that CRO role, that, that sales role evolving, uh, especially in the context of what I just talked about with the, the data nerds? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think uh, two points there. Um, since you brought up the Billy Bean, I've got, two, I forgot the guy's name, but in, in, uh, you know, in the movie, his kind of nerd, I've got uh, Jesse and Tucker who have been uh, tremendously helpful uh, for us putting together a sales community. But um, the, uh, to answer the question on the, uh, the CMO side, and the, uh, the CMOs out there probably aren't going to like this answer, but I think more and more um, you see CMOs and CROs kind of separated and it's kind of you know, different agendas. And I, you know, my belief is that eventually the CMO function or marketing is really going to come under sales and sales are really going to take a much more active role in driving and leveraging that marketing function in terms of what's the bank, best bang for the buck, what are they doing, how are they doing it. I mean, I've, got, I've got a lot of friends, won't name names, but you know, that are on the sales side and they're you know, doing what they can, but they just see you know, what I'd call kind of wasted money or inefficiencies on the marketing side. So if I maybe spin that a different way, I think given kind of analytics and those companies that do have best practices and are, and are right things on the marketing side, you know, they're going to continue to, to, to go and grow, you know, in concert with, you know, with, with the right sales teams. So I think that you, you bring up a great point and that area is going to continue to evolve a lot. Does, does that principle apply to product marketing? In other words, do you feel like product marketing should be more aligned with engineering or sales and maybe sales and finance? Or how, what do you, where do you land on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of old school. So I go back to Dick and Jack and Roger and uh, Mike Rutgers and you all them in terms of, hey, yeah, you have those silos, but you get everybody at the table, you know, kind of work, work, working well together. Um, it is interesting though, in today's world, the um, whole, you know, PLG, you know, product led growth models where, you know, a lot of companies now are trying to get in maybe almost like, you know, a, a VMware, maybe a BMC did in the early days where you kind of get into the low level developers and then kind of things, you know, bubble up. So that I think product-led growth model, having a lower cost inside sales model, you know, works when, you know, I'll say the kind of the, the product sells itself, but I would argue that I think some of those, you know, PLG led companies really miss out on leveraging the, the high-end enterprise relationships to kind of turbocharge and supersize and expedite, you know, larger 
sales deals, you know, larger ELAs. Well, and you mentioned earlier a channel, you said a lot of times that's overlooked and I couldn't agree more. Channel increasingly important. That's where a lot of the relationships live. It gives you scale. It, it just gives you a lot, a lot of leverage. Maybe talk about the importance of, of channel and how it relates to sales community. Yeah, I mean, they're, um, it, it's interesting. They're really, you know, into themselves. You know, there's some things that are channel, channel, but if you think about, you know, go to market tech sales, you know, pick the company on average, it's probably half of the business goes through the channel. And it used to be way back when, you know, just kind of fulfillment, but now the, the, the best companies really are those that have the right relationships that are adding value, that can help in the pre-sales, that can help on the post-sales, that can help kind of cross-sell. You know, if I'm a customer, you know, I, I don't want to deal with, you know, whatever, five or 10 different vendors, if I can have a one-stop shop with, you know, one bar, solution provider, partner, SI, you know, whatever you want to call them, you know, that certainly makes, you know, life a lot easier. And I think they've, you know, a lot of companies almost been kind of a, a second class citizen, but I think those companies that really bring them into the fold as really partners at the table, whether you're doing account planning sessions, whether you're doing sales calls, but kind of lever leveraging that as a, you know, kind of, I call it a variable cost kind of off balance sheet Salesforce really is, uh, you know, wh where the future is going to continue to go. So you've been a successful individual, you know, sales contributor. You've been a CEO. You've run, you know, large sales organizations. I mean, you basically ran sales at at, at HP for Donatelli, um, and so you you've seen it all. And you've been, you know, uh, helping you know startups. When you look at hiring sales people, uh, what do you what do you, what are the attributes that you look for? Is it is it intelligence? Is it you know hard work? Is it coachability? What are some of the things that are most important to you? And and do you apply different attributes in different situations? What are your thoughts on that? Great, great, uh, great question. And a little plug maybe for our recruiting business, top talent recruiting. <laughs> but um, uh, one of the key things that we do, which I think is different from others in the recruiting side, is the relationships. So a lot of people don't dig in, or when we're talking to candidates, they say, "Well, nobody really asked me this before." And I would argue a key differentiator, and this is way before COVID, but especially now with COVID is, okay, who do you have relationships with? So I could be talking to a candidate that maybe somebody's hiring for, wants to cover uh, you know, financial services in New York. And then I'll say, okay, well, you know, who do you know at City JP B of A? And you know, I, I'll know more people than they know. And I'll probably say, hey, just so you know, that's weird, me up in Boston, I know more than the, you know, the council you probably know the best. So really trying to unearth really kind of who has the right relationships. And then uh, separate from that, in terms of a reference check, being able to reference check sooner in the process with somebody that you know well firsthand, as opposed to secondhand. And a lot of times um, I've seen even, uh, you know, some of the, um, you know, larger, more expensive recruiting firms, you know, kind of wait till somebody's a finalist, they want to do an offer, then they do a reference check and they do the reference check with, you know, somebody that they don't know. And to me, I mean, that's totally useless. What's great with LinkedIn today, you know, I could be, you know, say if we're, we're looking at you for a candidate, maybe, maybe a bad example, but I don't know, we probably have, you know, a thousand, you know, in common. And from those, we probably have, you know, 200 that we both know well that I could check. And when you do reference checking, it's really not, you know, it's not a maybe, it's either a, hey, the person's a yes or the person's a no. So trying to do that early in the process, I think is a, uh, is a big differentiator. And then uh, a last and probably third piece I'd, hi I'd highlight is, you know, if it's a startup company, you can't get somebody that's just from a big company. If it's a uh, you know big company role, you can't get somebody that's just from a small company. You got to you know really make sure you kind of peel back the onions and see where they're from. And you could have somebody from a big company, but they were kind of wearing a smaller division. So again, you have to kind of you can't judge a book by the cover. You got to kind of peel back the onion. So Randy, how how do people learn more about sales community? Where, where do they go to to engage, sign up, et cetera? Absolutely. It's uh, salescommunity.com. So uh, it should be pretty straightforward. A lot of great information there. Uh, you can go subscribe and uh, if you like it, spread the word and a lot of great content. And uh, you can uh, ping me there. And uh, if not, I'm randy at salescommunity.com. So love to get any feedback, help out in, uh, in, in any way we can. Well, I think it's critical that you're putting this network together and you, you are probably the best networker that I know. I've seen you in action at, uh, at gatherings and you've really been a great inspiration and a friend. So Randy, thanks so much for, for doing the sales community and coming on theCUBE and sharing your experience with us. Great, thanks Dave, appreciate it. All right, you're very welcome and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and we'll see you next time.